the Sony Dash PCM3402. This was the last digital reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder made in stereo to leave the Sony Productions. As the recorder plays, we have two sets of VU meters, auxiliary, which is an analog recorded channel on the tape, and the left and right channel, which are two digital channels recorded on the tape. As you can see, the output is variable. Another useful feature of the machine is the 0.2 dB range. This allows you to record and show a very very accurate scale between 0.2 of a dB of absolute maximum making sure that you use the full threshold of the tape recorder without going into digital distortion. The recorder has a unique feature called auto punch. If we to assemble the tape. Like so. Go back to the digital output. If we press the auto punch, or we can take it forward, it does take a little bit of time, as it seems to be incredibly accurate in how much you can and cannot trim on it. If I take it forward a few frames, Try that. One of the functions becoming increasingly popular on studio machines is the shuttle control. Engaging it meant that the operator could fast forward or rewind whilst listening to the tape at the same time at different speeds. The recorder keeps the tension on the tape at all times. This allows the operator to be able to move the tape backwards and forwards. The tape will not come away from the head so long as it's not forced or moved too quickly. This is useful so that an engineer or a recordist can move the tape backwards and forwards to be able to sample through the tape by hand manually if they do not wish to use a shuttle control. Once they have found the spot that they want to either remove or splice out, edit is pressed and the tape then becomes loose and slack enough so that the editor can take the tape off from their head, put it onto a splicing block and cut it. Pressing the stop function on the recorder then brings the tension back. The digital audio is recorded onto the tape using eight digital heads. The flashing orange lights indicate a cyclonic redundancy check. The recorder can have many errors before this affects the sound signal. To the left you can see a green orange LED saying correct. If the error correction is too high the lights will go to orange. If it becomes unreadable the muting circuit will kick in and the sound will stop being replayed. There is another signal recorded onto the tape. This tape allows the recorder to digitally track the tape. The phase shows the correction between the replay of the tape and the signal reproduced. The phase difference is very similar to what's known as woe and flutter on an analog machine. The recorder uses the digital signal to correct any kind of problem so that the woe and flutter is kept at a very minimal. The recorder has two methods of timing on the tape. One of them is the time code displayed. The second is the standard counter as you'd find on many tape recorders, which can be reset at any time. The time code, however, cannot be reset as it's recorded onto the tape. If you press play, the machine will pick up the time code of the tape. You can only reset it if you erase the tape and insert a new time code. Due to computer progress, machines like this were soon outdated and by 1997 the Sony Dash 3402 had been stopped produced as hard drive recorders had become very popular by this time.